Mountain bikes may well be tough old things that can take a hell of a pace in out on the trails, but they're not invincible. It's entirely possible that you're slowly, or actually in some cases, rapidly aging your pride and joy. So let's take a look at those things that really do kill your bike, and more importantly, what you can do about it. Okay, so let's start with bearings, loose bearings in particular. Every mountain bike, even one that doesn't have rear suspension, will still have quite a lot of bearings on there. You've got your rear hub, you've got the free hub body itself, you've got the bottom bracket, you've got the front hub, and you're gonna have the headset. And then added to that equation, if you have a rear suspension bike, there's gonna be shock mounts on there and any pivots that you have on the back, whether they use regular bearing races like these or cartridge bearings, or if they use bushings. Now, they all wear out and they all have problems. Now, if you ride with loose bearings, firstly, you're adding friction to your ride, so that's firstly not a good thing. Secondly, in the form of, let's say, rear suspension, if you're riding with loose bearings, just say two of them loose, maybe the main pivots, that means there's gonna be movement, and that movement will translate to additional wear on the other ones. So it really is, is an essential thing to A, make sure there's no hindrance to the movement of your back end of the bike and that nice suspension action you're paying for, but also B, to make sure you don't prematurely wear all the other bearings on there because it's all connected together. Now bearings, given the nature of how they're used on a bike, they will wear out over time. No bearing is gonna be completely invincible. Um, so it's down to you to basically maintain them as best as you can. Some bearings we've done videos on, you can basically eke out a bit more life from them by flipping off the seals and putting some more grease in. Um, it's not gonna improve a badly damaged bearing, but it will help a dried up bearing last that bit longer if need be. Now, what you're looking for is a bearing that is smooth and a bearing that has no play in it. Um, you will find a well-maintained bearing or a new bearing has a slight resistance to it. That's purely from the grease that's on the inside and from the seals. Now, if I just tweak this one past the microphone, you'll hear that it probably doesn't have much of a sound. Whereas if I take a knackered old bearing, I think this is off uh, Steve Jones's bike, um, you'll hear the difference. So what you're hearing there is, in fact, pitted surfaces on the inside. It's all grinding round, and the actual bearings are basically been dragging on the inside of the shells of that. So bit by bit, that's fallen into bits, and if you continue riding a bike with these all over it, A, it's gonna feel horrible, B, its back end's gonna be all over the place, you're gonna get ghost shifting, um, generally not a good thing, and the long-term effect is it can damage your bike. So make sure you keep an eye on all the bearings on your bike, and you won't be ruining it. Now, most mountain bikes these days will have a suspension fork on the front. Obviously, this is a very old one. This is a Fox Talus. Um, now, the problem with stanchions on a bike is they're subject to ingesting all the muck and moisture into them. Now, as you know, a suspension fork is essentially made up of a few key components. Uh, other than that, they're all the same. All right, so the fundamental basics are the lower legs with the brace connected. That is known as the slider. The upper legs here are known as the stanchion tubes. And then you've got the crown steerer unit. Quite often, the upper tubes, the stanchions, will be one part, and it's known as a CSU. These essentially slide into the outer leg. There will be bushings on the inside of that, and then there'll be a foam wiper and a seal. Now, that's all there is to it. Of course, there's dampers and other systems on the inside. Now, the key to making your expensive suspension fork last is by firstly, keeping them clean. Secondly, keeping them serviced. Even a basic lower leg service will keep your fork going considerably longer than not doing anything. And the last one is making sure they don't look anything like this. And if they do, stop riding them immediately because you're just causing yourself more damage. So this will have been ridden in poor conditions, probably never serviced, and due to the telescopic nature of a suspension fork, as it's operating, you are slowly pulling in mud and muck into the fork, which grinds up and down, wearing out the bushes that help the fork slide in the first place, and then of course wearing out the more expensive legs. The bushes can be replaced. They're a consumable part. They're designed to wear out over time. The legs are not, and as you can see here, this one is in absolutely awful condition. And effectively, this was a write-off, this fork. Um, I've actually got this from a suspension tuners. This guy sent their forks there to get them serviced and uh, went home with a new pair of forks because these could not be serviced. Uh, and again, if you look at this, these shouldn't make any noise going down here, but it feels like sandpaper. It's the worst, if you can even hear that. Oh. 
10 quid, 20 quid, 30 quid, 40 quid, 50 quid, 60 quid. Lubricated even can help. If you apply some basic fork oil to these upper legs here, just above the seals, compress your forks a few times, it will ingest some of that in there and it will help basically keep them nice and supple. What you do want to be careful of when you are doing this is make sure you don't get any oil near your brakes. Make sure that cannot happen. Preferably do it with the front wheel removed from your bike just to basically safeguard yourself. Um, keep them nice and clean. Do a lower leg service. It's a really simple job. People get freaked out by a lower leg service thinking it's something crazy. Essentially all it is is removing two bolts from the bottom of the fork pulling the lowers off, draining out a very small quantity of oil, sometimes as little as 10 cc on there, and basically putting them back on again. It's very, very simple, and that will make your forks go on for a long time. Henry has just made a video on real-time fork servicing, so that is something you're gonna be able to check out and follow along at home. Think of it as a bit of a cooking program. Uh, nice and simple, again, no excuses for a new lot. It's a nice, easy thing to do, and it will save you a fortune in the long run. A worn chain. Um, in fact, a worn transmission. Now this is something that is a consumable part of the bike. You're gonna wear it out. However, you can make it last a bit longer if you follow a very simple rule. And that rule really is replacing your chain when it's worn, basically. It's quite simple. If you replace your chain just before it's knackered, you're gonna be able to make your chain rings last longer and your rear sprockets on a cassette will last longer. And the reason for that is there's a thing called chain stretch. Now your chain doesn't actually stretch. However, the chain pitch will get slightly longer. The components of a chain are you have these outer plates, you have the inner plates, you have the rollers, basically they're effectively like bushes, and you have the pins that go through them. Now those rollers get worn, and in doing so, they enable the chain to actually kind of, the links to stretch and move around. As the pitch changes very slightly, as the chain stretches, what's gonna mean is that basically, it's gonna wear on a different part of that tooth. The next thing you'll see is the teeth will start hooking. You can see this on really old knackered cassettes and chains uh, and on the sprockets. And the effect of that is your chain will start hooking onto the drivetrain. It wears them into really fine points and then suddenly you've got to replace everything. Well, I say suddenly, this is a thing that can happen over time. Get yourself a chain checker, plenty available on the market. They enable you to check your chain. And whilst you're at it, also, Take a good look at your chain as well and the rear sprockets and the chain ring. You can actually look at the teeth and you can see damage to them. What you're looking for or what you're not looking for is hooked teeth. Now they're quite easy to identify. You can see a really worn out chain ring against a brand new chain ring. They look very different. When you're looking at your chain, make sure if any parts of the outer plate have stepped out a bit, that's a classic example of where the chain will snap. And that chain will snap under pressure, which means it's always going to be in a bad situation. It throws your body weight forwards over the handlebars, uh, suddenly you're using your face as a brake. So it's not a good thing. So make sure you keep an eye on your chains. Brake pads. Um, obviously, you need brakes on a mountain bike, and you will be ruining the way your mountain bike rides and performs, and potentially some expensive parts of it if you don't keep an eye on your brake pads. Now, they pretty much do their own thing until they're either contaminated, in which case they're usually fit for the bin, um, or when you wear them out, basically, and you're gonna need to replace them. That is something you're definitely gonna have to keep an eye on because no brake pad lasts the same as another one. It completely varies on how much you use your brakes, the size of your braking rotors, and of course, where you ride in the conditions you ride in. Now, the construction of a brake pad, so you've got a metal backing plate, then you have your pad material. Essentially, they're bonded to that plate, but when they wear out, you can actually end up breaking just using that metal plate. Now, I shouldn't need to tell you that that's gonna be damaging for the rotors, and actually, it can be really bad for the pistons as well. So to take care and make sure you check your brake pads from time to time, very important. When you do inspect brake pads, the best way to do it is to remove them from the caliper. I do recommend putting some rubber gloves on, like latex or nitrile gloves, and the reason for that is you still have oils and stuff in your hands that can contaminate the pads. Uh, this one is already contaminated, so it doesn't matter that I'm holding it like this, but do take care and you keep an eye on those things. Now, there's one more thing that's actually very important and often overlooked. Uh, is the disc rotors themselves. Quite often people replace their brake pads when they're worn out and just carry on on the same rotors. You usually can, but 
They're not going to last forever because you're using metallic base pads on a metal rotor. You are going to wear that rotor down. At some point, it will fail. So it's important to check them. Uh, be careful using your bare hands on it because of the oils and then you don't want that to go near the actual braking surfaces. But you want to check for any sort of scoring on that surface. If there is some, that's a good indication that it's worn out. The best way is to get yourself a set of digital calipers or verniers to accurately measure the thickness. Definitely check your specifics with your brake manufacturer uh, for your own safety, check it, because the other alternative is using your face as a brake. Uh, worn out paint finish on a bike. Uh, needless to say, you will have spent some money on your mountain bike at some point, and you're gonna want it to stay looking good. Now, some people are more precious about this than others, but what really counts is the fact that you're riding a mountain bike in an off-road environment. You're around nature's grinding pace. That means mud, that means sand, that means grit. All of that stuff combined with the way that you ride and the conditions you ride in ultimately mean you're gonna prematurely ruin the look of your bike. It's gonna get old and haggard a lot faster if you don't look after it and take some precautions. The obvious one to do if you have a brand new frame is to take care of it before you even ride it by getting some sort of frame protection kit, something like InvisiFrame. There's various different brands that offer a similar service on the market, but essentially it's a heli tape kit. You cover up all the important parts of the bike that are typically exposed to being rubbed and damaged from various different things. It can just be as simple as the brake cables or the brake hoses rubbing your paint away. You can protect against that using heli tape. The chain stays and seat stays on your bike are often subject to riding shoes rubbing on them, depending if you are how you ride. If you ride flat pedals, for example, you're quite often a bit more ankles in on the bike for a bit more support, in which case you're quite likely to rub some of that paint off. So get them protected nice and soon. The same goes for your chain stays on the top. You probably want a bit of rubber across the top of there to protect it from the constant slapping of the chain on there, because it takes paint off as well as uh, basically make it sound quite awful as well. You want your bike to be nice and silent. The other area you want to pay attention to, of course, is the top tube of your bike. If you ride with any sort of knee pads or any sort of armor on your legs, it's quite likely when you're moving around on the bike, you might not realize this, but you will actually be rubbing the paint away slowly on the top tube of your bike. Now, the final one is the underside of the down tube and underneath the bottom bracket shell where you're subject to rock strikes and other stuff from flying up. Now, Day-to-day -day protection, again, good old heli tape, anything like that is good to cover it cosmetically. However, if you're doing something like a, a season at somewhere like New Zealand or Whistler or in the Alps, then you're likely gonna be doing chairlift accessed riding, which means you're gonna be riding a lot rockier stuff and you definitely will have rocks flying up. They're gonna hit your frame and they can cause a lot more damage. Now, if this sounds like you, you really do want some heavier duty protection. I quite often refer to uh, scotch, like a 3M scotch rubber mastic tape. Now, admittedly, it's not the best stuff in the world, but for this protective purpose, it's actually really, really helpful. If you want something a bit more heavy duty and don't mind something doesn't look quite as nice, use a section of old tire. We see this quite a lot with season airs, cutting it up and just putting it under their BB shell there and the bottom where you get those worst rock strikes. Uh, not cleaning your bike. Uh, cleaning your bike is the perfect opportunity to get hands on with it and give it a thorough inspection. Now, you wanna be working around your bike systematically, find a system that works for you. Um, I tend to work front to back. Everyone has their own way, stick to it so you don't miss any part of the bike. Now, what I mean by hands on is get a grip of it, get a feel of things, feel that back wheel, see if there's any play, look at the linkages, see if there's anything going on that shouldn't be going on, run an Allen key around the bike, make sure all your proper bolts, your pivot bolts, all that sort of stuff, make sure it's all torqued up and tight and taut as it should be. Pay attention to it and clean it. And hopefully you won't be leading yourself to a ruined bike that costs you loads of money. Okay, and the last one is overusing it. Um, yeah, you might think me mad for saying something like this, but some people override their bikes and basically classically wear them out long before their time. Now, whilst it's amazing to ride your bike all the time, if you only have one bike, it can be a problem. Now, plenty of friends have got a single bike, they commute to work on that bike, they ride them all week in the salt and the grime on the road, then they go out on the trails at the weekend, riding in our typically wet UK conditions, wearing out brake pads, wearing out drivetrains, constantly spending money on their bikes. Sometimes there is a better way. Having a rat bike is a pretty good way of doing this. Now, build yourself up something cheap, just get a second-hand bike, put some mud guards on it, keep that as your rat bike for commuting, all the daily chores and stuff like that, pop it in the shops, riding to work, riding to college, wherever you need a daily for. 
It doesn't matter if it's cheap and cheerful. It's not gonna get nicked. You don't have to worry about it. And it's gonna keep your Pride and Joy nice and clean and in better condition for the weekends. Now, I'm not suggesting you don't enjoy your bike on a daily basis, but just be aware that you could be prematurely wearing your bike out by using it constantly all the time. And it is a good idea to spend a couple hundred quid and have that second bike if your main bike is an expensive suspension bike. Well, there we go. There's seven ways you could be ruining your mountain bike and hopefully a few tips you can take away and make sure you're not doing that to your own bikes. Uh, if you've got any of your own tips like this, uh, let us know in the comments underneath. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, for a couple more helpful videos, click up here for deep cleaning your drivetrain. That's something I recommend really you should do that annually. Uh, make sure it stays in good condition. If you're riding conditions like ours, you probably want to do it quite a lot more frequently. And click down here if you want to turn your bike into a commuter. That is turning your existing bike, not buying a rat bike for that purpose. But pretty good video nonetheless. As always, give us a huge thumbs up here at GMBN Tech. Uh, click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Cheers guys.